I was helping a fellow TC Motor Guild member go through this car, and when I gave it a test drive, I noticed the car was all over the road. It was really hard to hold in a straight line, especially over about 45, 50 miles an hour. It just became unmanageable. So brought it here to the shop and did a little investigating, and the problem turns out to be the axle is backwards on the car. It was mounted backwards. It's not as uncommon as you might think. You can see here the numbers on the axle, they're in the front where they're actually supposed to be in the rear. So it's a little counterintuitive. Most people think that they should go to the front. Uh, and if you have it flipped around, it will definitely make the car unstable. So brought the car to the shop here to uh, remedy that. And um, the idea is to do this as easily as possible. Everything else on the car is fine. It's all in great shape. So we don't really need to rebuild things, just need to get the axle swapped around. So uh, the idea is to pull off these assemblies, uh, the spindle, hub, brake drum, knuckle, everything all in one piece. Just swap the bare axle around and put them back on. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that in case you run into this problem and um, hopefully save you a little time. Already starting on the other side of the car is Rob Zuka, fellow club member. Uh, you can see what Rob's doing here. Uh, the first order of business is to remove this little cap on top of the kingpin. Uh, it's just a single bolt. And when that comes out, there's a felt pad underneath. Uh, it's just to hold the grease in, keep the dirt out. So remove all of that. And uh, we've exposed the kingpin. Next step is to take the nut off of the uh, cotter that holds the kingpin in place. This nut would normally be on the front of the axle, but this axle is backwards, so it's on the rear. So uh, let's get that removed. The threads can be a little masked sometimes, but just... This one happens to have nylocks on it, which is wrench it all the way. That's a good point. This has nylocks on it, uh, which is not standard, but seems to work. Back over to my side, I've got a little head start on Rob here. And once you get that nut off, you need to remove that pin. So just hammer it out. They can be really stubborn, really stuck in there sometimes, you're probably gonna destroy these threads. So it's a good idea to have a spare set of cotters on hand in case you can't reuse these. You probably won't be able to. Um, so give them a good whack. And if you're lucky, like that, they'll come right out. So on the other side here, you've got the steering stop, which would normally be on the back. Uh, and you'll see that's starting to come out already. And still not quite loose enough to pull out, so we're gonna have to use a hammer and punch to get that out. Okay, trusty hammer and punch here. There it goes. There's your cotter. Over on Rob's side here, it's being a little more stubborn. But it went. There it went. See it's inside there. If you're lucky, it'll pull right out. Like that. The next step is going to be to remove the kingpin here, but it can't go down because it'll hit the brake backing plate. So it has to go up. Going up means this brake line is in the way. So the hose has to come off for this to work. We're going to do that real quick and then we'll get the kingpin out. Okay, so first thing you want to do is crack the hard line fitting. Get that loose. There we go. And once that's loose, we can take off the big nut here to the brake hose and then it'll slip right out. Watch out for brake fluid. If you have dot three or dot four, it eats paint. So when you loosen these up, you might get some drips. So good idea is to have a drip pan and some rags ready. Just keep it off of the paint. And don't touch anything. So with the frame side off, the next step is to get the hose off of the backing plate. Now there's gonna be a copper washer under there. Don't lose that. Uh, this side is just a matter of getting a wrench on it and unthread it that and just unscrew it by hand. If the brake bleed nipple is in the way, you can take that out. Just again, be careful about dripping brake fluid. It'll take the paint off of anything it touches, including your suspension. So now we just hammer this right on out of here. Careful not to gouge your bushings in there. Might be far enough to pull it off. Let's see. No, not quite. 
Now we've got to go a little farther. Still not there. Okay. Let's get it just a little farther. We need longer. removed and we can just set that off to the side. There we go. Okay and there's our bare axle end. Now we just have to go over and do the other side. I'm just gonna let him do all the work. Sorry, my wife. With the axle stripped down we're ready to pull it off. To do that you need to undo these nuts down here which are attached to these long bolts that go through. Now we don't really have to take the bolts out. To do that, normally you'd take this top plate off of the axle, undo the nuts, pull the bolts through. We don't need to do that. We just need to take the nuts off, leave the bolts in place, and we can just slide the axle up off of the leaf springs. So, a little quicker way to do it. Here we go. Okay, with all the nuts off, you've got a couple little plates underneath, get those off of there, and then you can just pull the axle up. Uh, we're going to take both sides off at the same time and just pass it right on through, flip it around. Ready? Yep. Okay, mine's out. Alright, let me get this there. There we go. You put that jack in the way on purpose? Yes, I did. Okay, so this car has its caster correction wedges in. Uh, they don't all. These were introduced uh, to um, lighten the steering, but they also make the car a little less stable. This car has a Datsun steering box, which improve stability on its own because it has a lower steering ratio. You don't really need these wedges in there. Uh, a lot of people with the original BC box will take these out also. This is a whole topic that could be discussed. Um, we won't here. There's plenty of information out there about it. You can decide if you want to run these or not. We're going to leave them out here just because this car does have an aftermarket steering box with a lower ratio. The steering is already very light. Um, so we're just going to put these on the floor, save them for someone else who might want them and put the axle back on. Okay, you got your wedge off, right? Wedge is off. Okay, here we go. So the bump stop just came off. Uh, it looks like it's come off before and someone glued it on. Apparently that doesn't work. Uh, this is a really old rubber. Um, these will need to be replaced, so. Um, just another thing to check. Old cars, you know? There we go. Come down. Okay, both sides are back on, so all we need to do is reverse the process. Like the Haynes manual says, reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. So, don't forget your little plates on the bottom. Uh, get these on there, double nut the bolts, get everything torqued properly, and reverse it.
you put these knuckles back on the axle, make sure the thrust washer is still on the bottom side. You need a thrust washer right there. And if there were any shims on the top when you took it apart, make sure those go back in the same place. Here's something else to watch for. The uh, kingpin, it has this slot here. That needs to be lined up for this pin to slip through it. So this kingpin needs to be rotated clockwise about 90 degrees. It must have rotated a little bit as it was coming apart. So we just need to rotate it around this way until it's roughly lined up with that hole and then the split pin will do the rest of the work. So you might find yourself misaligned like this. The slot on the top matches the flat on the kingpin where the cotter engages. You can just get yourself anything that's a quarter inch wide like this piece of scrap steel I have laying around. It'll fit into that slot and you can use it like a screwdriver to straighten it out. There we go. And I can finish putting that in. There we go. Last thing is just to get this cotter in here. I like to put a little oil on it, make sure there's no burrs on there. Goes in from the rear of the axle, now that the axle's put in the right way. Um, you, know, you can, you're gonna have to hammer it in, but you can turn the kingpin if you need to, uh, by the top like we were talking about. Uh, if you have it a little too high or too low, you can adjust that. But basically just hammer this thing in and it should go all the way down uh, flush here. That's your steering stop and then put the nut on the front side. So, there's the nut in place on the front of the axle. You can use that nut to draw it in a little bit more if need be. Just hammer on the back and uh, tighten the nut on the front and eventually you'll get there. So now we just have to put on the top cap here, put some fresh grease in the kingpin and we're going to need to put the brake hoses back on and bleed the brakes and uh, should be good to go. And with the brake hose reinstalled, we're pretty much done here. We can put the wheels on and go for a drive. Those are dots and brake drums you're looking at there, so don't be alarmed at the fins. You can see the pedal stops in the correct place now. Everything's back together. You should probably give it a fresh squirt of grease at this point. Um, that's about it. So we've got the car back on the ground. The wheels are on, the brakes are bled. We've checked all the nuts and bolts to make sure everything is tight and safe. So the only thing left to do now is drive the car and enjoy it. Hope this helps someone out. Happy motoring.